today I'm going to show you how to hack your SNES Mini to get more games on it and to also play other retro console games on it. Let's get right into the video. Now before we begin, here is the stuff you will need. You will need your SNES Classic and also a USB cable that has this type of port. But you can use the one that did come with your SNES. You're going to need your computer for this. Today, we're going to be using the Hack G Hack to hack our SNES Mini so we can install our ROM files to play more SNES games on here and also get other console games on here. So scroll down, go to the GitHub link here. So scroll down to the assets. The portable zip is just so you don't have to install it to your machine but the installer is to actually install which i think is a lot better so we're gonna download that so now we've downloaded our hack she installer so we're gonna want to double click and then it's gonna ask us to uh do the thing where it says yes or no you're gonna want to say yes and then we get a couple of options we get the hack she file the portable install the start menu shortcuts and desktop shortcut I'm going to click also the desktop shortcut and next and install. It's going to install it. And now it has completed. So now we can close it and open up Hackchi 2. Okay, so now it is putting on the original games that are on the console. Now the console is not plugged in yet, but we will soon plug it in. It will have this message saying what you want to do. You're going to want to press OK. It's going to update the list. You're going to want to allow access. This is for Sega Mini, which we do not have. Now, all of these console stuff right here is for SNES, if we were to plug it in, but we are doing our SNES, which is the American version, so Super NES, and then all the games will appear right here. Now, it's time to actually start modding our SNES. So, first, you're going to want to come up to Kernel, Install Slash Repair, click Yes, then... It's going to ask if you want to allow. You're going to press yes. It's going to bring up this and it's going to install the drivers onto your computer to then install the mod. As you can see, it's installing the drivers. Now we wait. Make sure it's powered on. And then grab your USB cable. Hold the reset. And then you're going to want to plug it in. Then wait for the on-screen instructions. You just heard it there. And then it's going to update the kernel. And now you wait. Stop holding the reset button when it starts saying updating kernel. It will reboot a couple of times, but it will soon be done. So if you did it successfully, the it will show up with this message. But anyways, we're going to start adding games to our mini. And if your console is successfully connected, you should see this green dot right here, which means it is online and ready to add some games. So now we're going to add some games. So you, you can press add more games which will bring you to your file sections or if you want you can open your file explorer let's move this out of the way you can click your file and drag it in and then it will process the game and now we have mortal kombat 3 on now it is on here now bring your attention down to here where it says 3.4 megabytes out of 
262.8. This right here is the storage on your SNES Mini. So you want to be careful on what games you put on here because you can't put infinite amount of games on your SNES Mini. If the artwork for the game doesn't show up properly or isn't there, you can just either click browse, which will give you the option to use a PNG file or JPEG, Google, where you can search for an image on Google. I'm not sure what Spine does, though, at all. Now, before we put our games onto our console, you're going to want to press Structure, Custom, Structure, and then press this again. And then it's going to show you every single game that's going to be on here or what's already on here. And there's Mortal Kombat 3, which we're putting on here. But an easy way to sort this all, you can split it equally, split by first letter, by console, or by genre. Or, like this. What that does is it adds a folder, which will have the games you have imported onto your console. And you can just click the folder in your console, and it'll be there, and you'll be able to play it. Then you're just gonna want to play OK. And now we can start. So now synchronize selected with your mini. This is just gonna show you what it's gonna look like once it's all synchronized. You're gonna press OK. And then right here it's gonna start. And then you're pretty much done. It even says you're done. So right now we're going to test out if it works. I still have it plugged into my computer. Now it will still work if you have it plugged into your computer. And that way if you want to still add more stuff in you can do that. So here is our SNES. And as we can see. We have our more games folder. And Mortal Kombat 3 is now on here, so we're going to test this out and see if it works. Let's see if my skills are good. This feels weird because I've never played Mortal Kombat on a SNES before. But as you can see, the game is working perfectly fine. And it appears... I am now dead, but the game does work. I just got run over by a train, which does not look good at all. Damn, that's very sad. But anyways, it appears that it is working perfectly fine. And now you have some games on here, which is very good. So now, I'm going to show you how to get other console games onto your SNES. Make sure to leave your SNES plugged in still. Let's begin. So, make sure you have not unplugged your console from your computer, so then... Oh, uh, because my capture card audio is now starting up again. If you did accidentally unplug it from your computer, you can just turn it on and then plug it back in. And then 30 to a minute later, you should see the little green dot here again, and it will say online. So to get more console games onto your computer, you are going to want to go to Tools. Wait, no, sorry. Modules, KMFD's Mod Hub. It's gonna load. And then you're gonna wanna go to KMFD RetroArch. And you're gonna want RetroArch 1.9.10 Extreme SC. And then download and install the module. So now it has finished downloading to the console we are now going to want to go to kmfd cores and now it has a whole bunch of cores these cores right here are the ones that are able to run on the snes yep that's a lot 
and apparently it can somehow run PlayStation, PSP, Sony games, which I was not expecting, but, so, I have a Sega Genesis, so, game with me right now, so here's what you're gonna wanna do, so, you're gonna wanna click download module, so then it puts it in sort of like a queue for a download, so if you were to get other um, course, then that way when you go to download them all at once, it'll just be quick, like that. So now, you're going to want to do this. X here. It's going to reboot or something. Click modules and install extra modules. And then you're going to want to select the core you want. And it looks like it didn't install, I guess. If it did install, it's going to be grayed out for you. It also has UIs, font, custom, actually, music, SNES filters, no thumbnails. And you just want to press OK. And then it's going to boot, and then it's going to reboot your SNES, which shouldn't take that long, but once that's done, you're going to want to do this next. So now it will let you know that you're done, so you're going to want to press OK, and you're going to want to make sure that you're online. So now, you're going to want to open your file explorer and i have sonic the hedgehog which is for sega genesis and we're gonna drag that in it's gonna process the game and now it is on here as you can see with all the metadata and stuff and not that much storage is being taken up so we can even get even more games on it so now with the emulated games that aren't for SNES, you're going to want to click, right click, and then select Emulation Core. You're going to want to click on it, make sure it's on the console that it's supposed to be, and then click on the core you had just downloaded or have for it, then you can just close it. Oh, oh make sure to apply it also. And then it's going to be down here, and it, and then when you boot up the game on your console, it will know how to open it. So now we have finished that. We're going to want to synchronize select the games with the mini. It's going to say that it's in an unsorted folder. So in the unsorted folder, you're going to see that your games that you put in are going to be here. But there actually is an even better way to sort these. Go to Home Menu and split by console. And now, it's split by Nintendo Entertainment System with all your Nintendo games and with your Sega games. And if you don't like the folder icon, you can actually click it and it has a whole bunch of folder icon thing. But, and there's a Darth Vader thing there, I guess. But this is SNES, so we go SNES USA or you can do that one if you want. Doesn't really matter, press OK. And same thing for this, this is the Mega Drive, so scroll down, Mega Drive, or, or Genesis, or that one, and then OK, and as we can see, the game is in there, the games are in here, and if you want, you could put the game here, which will be there, of course, more games course it also has folder back which is for going back but that doesn't really matter and now we press X everything is ready and we can press OK it's gonna go into the SNES and now we're done we press OK and now we're gonna test it out and see if it works it's going to show up with this. 
back and as we can see we have the Nintendo Entertainment System and the Sega Mega Drive. Click this and brought to here all the games and Mortal Kombat is here. You can go back go back As you can see, it's like a Mega Drive also. So, and the back button, but we just want to test this out and see. Sega! Sega! There's the little Sonic. Pretty good, but if you want to go back and you're far away from your console, you can just press select start at the same time, and you're brought to the retro arc menu. You can restart the game or close the content, which will bring you to this. Still in the retro arc menu. Not gonna lie, it does look pretty good on the SNES. And then you can just quit Retroark to go back to the SNES menu. And also, you can save. But it will save your Retroark menu progress. As we can see, I can't move because I was last in Retroark. But now I can because all you do is select start. And then... It may take a couple of times, but if you do save well in the retro arc, you just do select start a couple of times and you'll be able to move again. Sheesh. And we can just reset, go back to the menu, save, and it should work. Yep. So if you're gonna save, don't be in the retro arc menu. And then, you know, you can save. So pretty much, that is how you mod your SNES. Now, if you did like this video, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And see you all in the next video. Goodbye.